So as we were talking like that, Srila Prabhupada looked like a young boy. He was so beautiful and, and brilliant and very enjoying himself tremendously. And I also was enjoying myself. And he was, I was giggling too. It was, I don't remember what was so funny, but it was very joyful. And then there was a bang on the door, a couple bangs on the door, and the door opened, and in came some of the temple managers and GBCs from that area, and a few other people, and they all came in. It was kind of heavy duty, walked in and said, Prabhupada, you know, we have uh, some issues we need to discuss with you. And immediately, Prabhupada's face just fell, and he took away his hands like that, and he kind of got like this in his chair, and... And then he looked over at me and he, he kind of uh, shrugged like this, like kind of sadly like that was over, you know, our conversation was over. And then he, uh, he began to talk to them. And uh, then at one point, they, they were talking about other things. And then at one point he asked one of them, so how is your college preaching going? And that devotee said, oh, Prabhupada, we are very much liking the preaching. He goes, I am hearing about it. And he said, I'm hearing very many good things about the preaching. He pointed over to me. And, um, and then he said, tell me, tell me. And so the devotee started to tell, but he said, and Prabhupada goes, and how are the books going? And he said, well, Prabhupada, actually we're not distributing the books at the colleges because, you know, we're not allowed to take any money. And uh, we actually give some lectures and then um, we give out cookbooks. And Prabhupada said, I have not written any cookbook did I? He said, have I written any cookbook? And they said, well, you know, it's been put together. It has some little bit of philosophy and stuff like that. And Prabhupada says, why do you think I am staying here day and night writing and writing? Because I want these books to go out. Uh, he said, so you may give one lecture, but the chances are that it will go in one ear and go out the other ear. But he said, if you just even give them one book of mine, he said, it will stick. And then at that point, he just said, okay, everyone out. He said, I I'm tired. I need to go. We can discuss these things later. And, um, and then as he was uh, leaving, then I also was like paying obeisances, and I was also leaving. And then Prabhupada turned to me and said, thank you very much. The first time, I was in Vrindavan, and... Uh, Srila Prabhupada was there, and he would take his morning walk every morning. And there was a crew of us. I was just a newcomer. I didn't know anything very much at that time about cleaning his rooms. And uh, it was very fastidious. And the girl that was in charge, she knew every little thing, every tiny thing to do. And there was a short time he took a short walk. So she told me, oh, you can do the upstairs where his little desk is, and sometimes he took prasadam up there. She goes, because that's just the tiniest, smallest little area, so you can do that part. And I was nervous, but she said, all you have to do is the desk. You don't even have to do the floor. Someone else will come do that. You just do the desk, and remember to put everything back the exact way you saw it, and clean it perfectly. So I got up there, and I started getting a little bit nervous, because it was like a math problem or something, and I was so nervous, I couldn't quite remember where everything went. I, I took it up. I, and then by the time it was time to put it down, I couldn't quite remember where it was supposed to go. But I was doing my best, and I was dusting everything, and I, I was starting to sweat, getting more and more nervous. And uh, there was quite a lot of things on that desk. And I was doing as good as I could, as well as I could. And then at, at one moment, um, she said, Oh, time, time, Prabhupada's coming, Prabhupada's coming, everyone down. So I had a terrible feeling, like I hadn't really had even a good look at what I had done or not done. And I felt incomplete, but anyway, I had no choice. I ran down the stairs, and, uh, and then I was standing by the side of his room as he went into his room. And I noticed with a terrible sense of shock that he didn't go to any of his downstairs rooms. He went straight upstairs. And then I looked up there, and I could see him going and sitting down at his desk. And within one minute, there was this loud, Haribol! Who has cleaned this room? <laughs> and so... Daivi Shakti ran up there, and then she came back down, and she said, Mula, you really messed up. And I was like, I know, I know, what did I do? And she said, well, Prabhupada noticed immediately that you, you had put his glass of water in not quite in the exact place, and the little tiny silver cup top that goes on top of his water, you forgot to dust that. 
So I was amazed at Srila Prabhupada that of all the things that were done in that room, that he had that kind of ability to immediately find that. And ever since then, I've always remembered that standard of cleanliness. And whenever I think I'm cleaning for Srila Prabhupada or for the deities, I remember that and I know that he's looking and he can see every little thing that might be missed. We didn't so often get invited into Srila Prabhupada's garden for the afternoon darshans, but somehow one time we made some record amount of book distribution, and as a reward we got to go to Prabhupada's garden. So I was sitting there, just a few devotees there. It was a beautiful afternoon, and Prabhupada was very uh, regal, sitting on his dais there. And uh, Again, it was an Indian gentleman who walked in at one point, and he was this tall man, and he had a dhoti on, like an orange dhoti, and some kind of a Ivy League shirt with a jacket on, like he was a professor or something like that. And when he began to speak, he spoke like that, like he'd been in the West for a while, and he was trying to integrate whatever little you know, bit of Krishna consciousness he had brought back from India. But he was respectful to Srila Prabhupada, and Srila Prabhupada was very affectionate to him. And he sat him down right beside him, and he began, in a very masterful way, to discuss with him just very light and sweet things like the weather and, um, you know, the garden and just very nice things. And the man was feeling excited. He was kind of talking and saying affectionate things to Srila Prabhupada. And then at one point, Srila Prabhupada said uh, something confronting on one of the things that he had said. He had just said some kind of impersonal thing and, and Prabhupada caught him on it and can't remember what it was exactly, something about Krishna being a person. And, um, and, if, and the man, he, he, he kind of was balking at that. And then Prabhupada was, started to get a little heavier about him. He goes, you don't know that Krishna's a person, the Supreme Personality? This is all Krishna's. None of it is yours. And then the man was kind of like looking around a little for some moral support to us, and we were all just sitting like that. And, and then Prabhupada just decided to give that man a huge dose of mercy, and he began by getting heavier and heavier with him and just saying, you are thinking that you are some professor, let alone some sannyasi. He goes, but you are a fool. He goes, you are nonsense. You don't know anything. How can you masquerade yourself as, as, a, as a professor, as a teacher? He goes, you don't, you don't even know the simplest things of Bhagavad Gita. And the man goes, oh, I've read Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada said, no, you haven't. He goes, I know for sure that you haven't. He goes, you don't know the simplest things. He goes, you are, you are a, a fool and you are a rascal. And the man goes, he was like extremely shocked. And he kept kind of looking over it. And for some reason, he looked at me, I guess, just because I was a, a girl or something. And he was like, and I just kind of like turned my, I just kept looking at Prabhupada. And, and so he kept looking back at Prabhupada and he had nowhere to go. And so at a certain point, Prabhupada just kind of leaned over and he says, you are a nonsense and a fool, super fool, and you are a demon. You're a demon. And at, at, at that point, the man, something kind of happened where he just broke. And he just went, yes, I am demon. I am. Oh, I am a nonsense. I'm a rascal. I'm a demon. And then Prophet just kind of looked at him kind of happily, like shook his head like that. And the man went to pay obeisances at Prophet's feet in the dirt. And he paid obeisances, and he was started to kind of cry. And he said, I am demon. I am nonsense. I am demon. And he was kind of like doing this kind of, kind of like rolling around kind of a little bit in Prabhupada's, by Prabhupada's feet. And then Prabhupada, just like a, the most magnificent swan or king, he just gently pulled his feet away, stood up, and just walked out of there. Walked out with his head held high, just very regally, and just walked out. And a few of the sannyasis and people left with him. And there was just a, a couple of us left in there. And we were just stunned. We were watching this man. And he continued. He didn't even rec realize that Prabhupada was gone. He had his eyes closed and he was going, I'm demon, demon. I am such a demon. And then after a little while, he kind of realized that, you know, that uh, where he was. And he kind of shook himself off from the dirt. He kind of sat up and he looked around and he kind of looked at us, and he had this blissful smile on his face. He goes, he was kind of smiling like at each of us with this very kind of innocent, beautiful face. And he said, Jai, Jai, Hare Krishna. And then he, he walked out the other door. And that was the end of that.